You had dropped a bomb because one of the things that we talk about around the country is when I do my, you know, get everybody to raise their hand if they've ever faced a criminal assault. And we find that between 80 and 100 percent have been criminally assaulted on the job. We're not talking about that confused grandma. We're talking about an actual criminal attack. Uh, but yet only two to three percent ever really reported it. And um, so uh, it wasn't until I was talking with Anthony that he, you know, kind of tell me his his perspective when he heard you, you know, say what you said. But his brain was kind of like, what? This guy? I mean, this guy's like the, the nicest guy, you know, ever. I mean, this guy's like a great guy. But we see it a lot, you know. I mean, I, now you're probably starting to hear some of the stories, but do you remember which day it was? Was it the day three, day four? Uh, I think it was day four that we were, that that uh, that conversation came up that you're talking about, yeah. Um, do you want to kind of talk about how that goes and what you tell your people or what you even told us that day? I mean, anything you want to talk about on that, because that is that whole what happens after the assault is often worse than the assault itself. And the whole underreporting thing, and it goes on and nobody knows. I mean, you're proof. Well, the, uh, the story, as you all well know, uh, was uh, I was working as an RN. Um, about, I guess it was about seven or eight years ago now. And... Uh, uh, you know, I had worked in Newark in the streets for many years, and uh, we had a violent patient on the unit, potentially violent patient. And a lot of the other nurses were concerned about being in the room with them, and they had asked if, you know, I could take the lion's share of the shifts with them. So, because uh, he had been an inpatient for some time. And, you know, like I had said before, I mean, I had done a lot of martial arts as a kid. I'd worked in, uh, worked in the field for a very long time. So I certainly am nothing along the lines of a Superman, but, you know, I said, yeah, you know, I'll keep an eye on him. I'll, I'll take him just, you know, basically took the hit for the unit, pardon the pun. But uh, while I was there and I was taking care of him one day, uh, I dropped to my guard just for a few seconds and uh, he actually kicked me in the face. He kicked me so hard that I fell backwards and struck my head on the tile. I uh, was out for, they say, about five minutes. I woke up, the, the trauma physician was there. Uh, the nurses were there all around me and everything like that and uh, got taken down to the ER. And I ended up having a, a pretty significant uh, cerebral contusion. And what happened was uh, over the next uh, week or so, a week to two weeks, I developed short-term memory loss as a result. Uh, it was pretty scary. Uh, couldn't remember where I was going from one step to the next. Uh, and things. Uh, couldn't be trusted to even like cook at my house because I'd forget that I was cooking. Uh, one day I almost burnt the house down because I just walked away from it. And uh, it was a very traumatizing thing in the aspect that uh, I had a wife, uh, three young children. Uh, I was the sole provider at the time. And uh, the thing that I think uh, was the worst of it, at least from my personal perspective, was when my wife and I sat down and I said, uh, I'm a critical care nurse. You know, everything that I do requires a memory. And if this ends up being permanent, you know, what are we going to do? And, you know, it was a very traumatizing moment in that aspect. Uh, interesting enough, and one thing maybe I haven't uh, mentioned to you or to the other instructors is that uh, up until your class, I had never mentioned that in a public forum to anybody. But here I am, it's like, you know, I'm much older than a lot of the other instructors and sort of the senior man on the tour, every tour I'm on. And yet this was not something that I felt was uh, really needed to be mentioned. And, you know, it's interesting when you bring up that, you know, this really hits home to a lot of people and drives at home uh, because really I was the victim of a criminal assault and it happened on the job. I was injured. You know, thank God I recovered after uh, some time and uh, I'm 100 percent now. I certainly feel for people who have that permanently because it was a horrible thing to go through. But uh, it just was very interesting that, you know, I kind of kept that to myself, uh, you know, whether it be a. Uh, pride or embarrassment or whatever the reasoning behind it but I never felt that it was really something that I wanted to share and when that day came out and everybody was talking about you know their uh, their experiences with being victimized and whatnot uh, I just felt like telling people and uh, you know that's when it came out well and it's a uh, it, it's like uh, every uh, time that I get someone like yourself to uh, speak of an incident um, because would you agree that uh, 
while it wasn't necessarily life-threatening, you didn't die. Um, you weren't permanently uh, injured uh, or scarred per se on the outside. But the, would you not agree that uh, it, you know, an assault, while not life-threatening, most certainly is life-changing? Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, we've we've discussed that at length in the program, and uh, you know, between the other instructors, I mean, we discuss that on a regular basis. Uh, I personally agree wholeheartedly. I mean, it changed me. Really made me question whether or not I still wanted to do this as a profession. Um, I've always been a bedside, hands-on guy. I mean, I'm not a manager. I'm not a a, a uh, administrator type person. I mean, I like being elbows deep, boots in the field. But uh, it definitely created a uh, an anxiety in me. You know, even though I do this out of passion, I mainly do it out of a paycheck, and I, you know, for a reason. So, you know, if I get injured, the thought that was always in the diet survive on workers' comp. You know, I need I need to be able to keep working, and uh, I think that that did definitely uh, plant the seed in my head of just a, a, about you know potentially getting hurt again. And if I did have a passion about what we do now, um, before passion about it now, being a personal victim of workplace violence. Well, and, and it's so funny that you say it like that because, uh, you know, as you know, because you went through the program, that this was just a hobby. I mean, I had no you know, idea, desire to uh, make a living, which I most certainly don't do very well of, uh, of at this, you know, it is, um, you know, it was a hobby, but then once I was carjacked and, and nobody essentially cared, you know, I mean, it was like, literally, that's the way I felt about it. And, and like you, I didn't like to talk about it. I, I didn't, you know, uh, well, I was actually more embarrassed than anything because it was like, here I am, you know, martial arts guy, running my own martial arts school and I teach law enforcement DT and I'm the guy that created this program and some dude was able to carjack me and was able to punch me and, you know, so it was much a, a, of an embarrassment and a, a shameful thing, but uh, there's most certainly it's an entire cultural thing. You know, it is like, um, I cannot begin to tell you how many instructors over the years would go back and, and teach and then would, uh, you know, teach their first class. And once they start getting people past the rigidity and the denial of, or the um, holding it in, uh, that, that they start, you know, going, oh my God, I didn't know that happened to you. Or nobody told us that. Or, you know, hey, our kids go to college together. How did I, how did I not know this happened to you? Why? It's our culture, man. You know, and yet, uh, you know, we ridicule people that get beat up on the job in healthcare as if they were supposed to have been superhuman. You know, I mean, if a cop gets shot, no other cops show up and laugh at them. Uh, if a, you know, um, uh, a firefighter gets burned, other firefighters don't show up at the hospital and laugh at them until it looks like Freddy Krueger. But if a paramedic uh, gets beat up or an EMT gets beat up or a nurse gets beat up, particularly like in the ED setting, you know, it's not as bad on the floor as it would be uh, in other places, but the, the ED setting and all the others, like pre-hospital and for EMT, medic, or even firefighter on the EMS scene, they want to make fun of them. I mean, the, the you know, I mean, because whether it be Eric's story or, you know, Lynn's or any of those others, they go on with zero support or ridiculed for even, you know, wanting to press charges. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's just a, it's a whole culture thing. But, uh, you know, we mentioned it before because, like I said, when, you know, I watched the room and, uh, you know, when you were telling your story to the peers, you could just see, you know, the emotion in everybody's faces. I mean, it was, it was obvious because their look was, was that of, what, what, him, what, why, you know, and 